Spill time once again on the channel for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands. We are back with another zero cheese build. So this is essentially a future proofed build that won't be patched in the future or anything like that at all. Now the build in question it is a companion based build but once again we're not using any kind of exploits at all in this particular setup. We focus specifically on the Hydra companions. It's a lot of fun this build and I managed to get to Chaos level 35 with exactly zero problems with it. So it's really a powerful setup and once again zero cheese involved here. Now what we'll break down in the video, we'll start off with an overview, I'll go into the build in a bit more detail, we'll then check out the skills I'm using, next up we have the gear that I'm using, we'll then talk about the stat priority and then finishing up we've got some gameplay. Now let's dive in, let's start off with the overview first. Normally then when it comes to your companion builds you'll see that players will use the, the Spore Warden class as one of the two classes. For this particular setup we're actually using the Spell Shot and the Graveborn but it is a full companion setup despite that. Now the reason this works is when we're summoning our various different Hydras as spells and depending on the spells we've got we can have six available at a time within a few seconds which is pretty awesome but when you summon these the damage they do is based off companion damage and spell damage and your spell shot gets an absolute ton of spell damage to boost the damage on these. The particular element we're using but there is flexibility in regards to what you go for but the one that we're using for this setup is the fire element. So that is a quick breakdown of the build, let's go in now and look at the skills we're using. So we'll start off here by breaking down the Graveborn tree first, I will just mention straight away we're not using the Harvest node, most people pick that up, that is currently bugged at the moment, if we were to use that then it wouldn't be a zero cheese build, so that's why we are avoiding that. But very quickly some of the skills we're going for, this one is essential, Faith Throw Falls, you get more damage for the more companions you have, and we'll have around about 10 or so companions out at a time with this setup. We've then got Essence Drain, this is really important, you want your spell cooldown rate as high as you can actually get it so you can spam your spells and you'll see why once we actually get to the gear section and you see the spells that we are using. We've then got a one point wonder here in Dread Covenant, this one's pretty fantastic. We have Stain of the Soul, we've got five points in that so your Fate Maker spells deal bonus dark magic damage. Now the spells we'll be using are ones that actually summon Hydras because they're classed as spells they will gain the bonus dark magic damage from this as well so they'll be doing fire damage but they'll be doing dark magic damage on top of that as well so it really does ramp up. You've then got Dark Hydra, this one's great, whenever you cast a spell you will be summoning a Dark Hydra and if you get the right rolls in this you can get up to 5. We then have Punishment, the next one this is a 1 point wonder so you'll be casting your spells very often, when you do that your Demi Lich can cast Hellish Blast and that can do a significant amount of damage. This one here, Ascension, so it's a kill skill but whenever we cast a spell we'll get a kill skill because we're using the keystone at the bottom here. So this can get your maximum health and spell damage increased by 60%. We've got one point wonder, Lord of Edges, so 25% damage dealt and 25% damage reduction when your health is low. And then we've got two points in Blast Gasp, I put them in there just so I could get to the bottom of the tree so I could get the keystone. So casting a spell automatically activates all of the Fate Maker's kill skills. So that's everything we're using for the Graveborn, let's have a look at the spell shot skill tree. The active skill then we're using is Ambihectris, that allows us to use two spells which means we can summon more Hydras. We then have Magic Bullet, so this is converting some of your spell damage into your gun damage. I won't be using the gun too often to actually do damage in this but it's a pretty nice skill this particular one and we actually need some points in it to go further down the tree. We have Spell Sniper next, so we're getting Spell Increased Critical Hit Chance. We have Font of Mana, which is giving you the Spell Cooldown Rate, which is great. We've got Mage Armor, so every time we cast a spell we're regaining 10 ward, we'll be casting spells all the time with this setup. We have Glass Cannon here for an additional 30% spell damage, which we'll be converting to our Spell Hydras. And then finishing up, this one's really important, we've got Increased Spell Weaving Stacks, so it means they go all the way up to 8 and 
depending on the armor you're using, I'm actually show it off here, you can get a whole lot of damage. I don't have all of my armor equipped, but when I do, it's around about 65% or so. So each spell weaving stack, I get an additional 65% spell damage, including or not including the 10% you also get passively from the skill as well, and that all feeds into your hydras. So that's where your damage is coming from. So you want to make sure you're bumping up your spell shot power as much as you actually can. But that is the skills. Let's look at the gear now. Now, before we do actually look at the gear, let's quickly break down the enchantments. So on your gun, the one you're looking for is after reloading, which you'll be doing very often, you gain 50% companion critical hit chance. Companions regenerate 8% of their maximum health per second for 5 seconds. We're really going for that, for that increased critical hit chance. We then have on spellcast increased fire damage by 30% for 5 seconds. Now, some of these enchantments will only show on certain slots, so try and match them up with the ones that I'm actually using and the slots that I'm using as well. For the shield, we're using on spellcast increased elemental damage by 20% for 5 seconds, so it will affect your fire damage. And then finally, we've got on spellcast increased damage dealt by 15% for 10 seconds. I'm not sure if this will double dip the way it would work because if it's increasing all damage that should be companions and spells which your hydras, this one that we're actually looking at for the spell, actually have the tags for both because they get increased damage from companion and spell damage but again I'm not sure if it double dips. If anyone does actually know let me know in the comments below because that would be pretty amazing if it does. On the second spell I can't actually see anything that can roll that would be useful here unfortunately again if you know something that could potentially roll on the spell slot that would work and is not an overlap with the enchants I'm already using then do let me know but that's enchants let's break down the gear and I'll tell you why I'm using it gear wise then there's one gun really that matters with this setup it's this particular one here so you can see down the bottom thrown weapon explodes an impact and morphs into multi-headed hydra companion shooting at enemies for a duration so it has three heads it's doing fire damage and you can have i think it's three or four of these active at a time if you keep throwing them after that then what happens is they'll start to replace them so there is a cap on how many you can get but this gun is amazing for it you'll basically get that from doing your your chaos runs and going to the the pistol bunny at the end there i got it in about two or three runs. Looking at the melee weapon, you want to use the pickaxe because when you pick up gold, you get your increased spell cooldown rate, so you can cast your spells quicker. The rings that you want to go for, it's companion damage, perks you're looking for, a companion critical hit damage, and also companion critical hit chance. If you can get spell damage, that is fantastic as well. This particular ring, I would say, would be the best one. So while Ward is not full, and it shouldn't be full that often, because of the glass cannon perk where Ward doesn't regenerate, then the effects increase by a whopping 100%. Looking at the ward that we're using, this particular one, we're using it for the rune. It's got a really high capacity, which is amazing, but we're using it for the rune. So, increased companion damage by 25%. In regards to the armor, you want to get one that's got spell shot and graveborn. Spell shot must be the top one, so you get the additional damage for your spell weaving stacks. And then, in regards to your perks, you're looking for the likes of companion based ones or spell based ones, because your hydras, which we'll actually look at now, the damage will scale based on companion and spell damage so this is the perfect spell you're actually looking for so this particular one it's got two spell charges and it's a repeating cast you need to look for repeating cast so when you hold it down you spawn a hydra and impact if you hold it down you're spawning three hydras so if you've got this in both hands and you hold it down at the start of a fight you can spawn 12 hydras straight away which is absolutely amazing looking at the necklace we've got here i'm using it for the fire damage and the spell power damage i don't really have good perks on I could get better ones there without a doubt like overall damage I believe that's one that can roll there the best one you could actually look for and I'm losing a lot of damage by not having this so the build would be even better with it but it's this legendary one when the fate maker or a companion kills an enemy companion damage is increased by 20% for 15 seconds the effect stacks up to five times so that's an additional 100% companion damage I'm actually missing out on and when you see the gameplay at the end of the video I'm still working my way through the chaos levels really easy despite the fact I'm missing this 100% damage there but that is all the gear let's talk about the stat priority now 
Stat wise, the most important one you want to go for is intelligence. This gives you your spell cooldown so you can spam your spells and get your Hydra companions out as soon as you actually can. You've then got constitution when I put the points into now. There's a, a decent amount of survivability in this build, so you potentially don't need it. What I would say to do is in the first instance put your points into intelligence and strength and then see how the build feels. If you need some extra survivability, then pull some of the points from strength and put them into constitution instead. But there we go, that's everything you need to know to run this particular build. So what I'll do is I'll now finish up with some gameplay showing off. And this is Chaos level 35 gameplay. Once again, zero cheese involved with this, so the build will be future-proofed. So as always, I hope it's helpful. Thanks for tuning in. Stay safe. I'll see you all again soon. Reach <laughs>